The extrude command is one of the most basic features in Creo Parametric. Extrude adds or removes material normal to your sketch plane, and it's a sketch-based feature, so it uses a sketch to define the shape. And I'm going to do this video in Creo Parametric 3.0. Uh, some great enhancements were added in Creo Parametric 4.0 and 5.0, and those will be covered in a different video. And I prefer to create the sketch first. That's called the external sketch method. And so here I am in sketch mode. To create my geometry very quickly, I'm just going to use my palette to drop a polygon in as my shape. And let's change the dimension for the polygon here to a value of 10 use the drag handle just to locate it on my sketch references and then hit the check mark to complete my palette based sketch and so now to get out of sketch mode I will right click and hold and choose OK and so now I've got my shape created let's turn off the datum plane visibility and with the sketch selected I'll click on the extrude tool to create my feature and you see a preview of the geometry. And as I mentioned, it takes your sketch and adds the geometry normal to your sketch plane. And right now it's being created in the up direction. There is an arrow on the computer screen in the graphics area that I could use to flip the direction of the feature. You have the same button in the dashboard that appears at the top of the screen. You'll also notice that I have a dimension that I can change. Maybe I want this to have a value of 10. You have the same dimension on the dashboard as well. You could change, change this to a value of 12. Let's take a look at some of the other different options available to you. And I'm going to start with the depth. And I created this extrude feature in an empty part, so I've got a limited number of depth options. And there are a few different ways that you can get to it. There is a drop down list for the depth, and you can see that right now I have three different options available to me. The first one is a blind depth. If you leave your mouse over the icon for a second, it'll open a tool tip to tell you what that does. The next one is a symmetric depth. It'll take your depth value and put half on one side of the sketch plane and half on the other side. And the third option is to select it. So if I had some other geometry in my model, like a surface or a plane or a curve or a point, I could select that to drive the depth of my feature. In a couple minutes, I'll show you a second extrude feature and how I'll have more options once I have geometry in the model. The other way that you can get to your depth options is from the options tab. And here I have the symmetric depth. I'm going to change back to a blind depth. And here I have a value of 12. You could also have a different depth on the other side of the sketch plane, the side two direction. So I could have also a blind depth on the other side. And maybe on the other side, I only want to have a value of six. And you can see, just like with the side one depth, you could also have two selected to drive the depth of your feature. You don't have symmetric because symmetric would not make any sense with a side one and a side two. I'm going to change that back to none just to show you that a third way and my preferred way of getting to the depth options is by putting my mouse right over the depth drag handle and then right clicking. And you can see from here, you can both flip the direct the depth direction and also access your depth options. Okay, the other options available to you from this button, you could generate this feature as a non solid feature known as a surface. So here I toggle it as a surface feature. You can see that it is hollow. If you generate it as a surface from the options tab, you could choose to cap the ends so it looks like an enclosed volume, but it will not have any mass. I'm going to uncheck that. And I want to show you that if you hold down the right mouse button, you're able to create it as a solid feature, which is the same as clicking this button on the dashboard. And if I right click in the graphics area, I can generate this as a surface. So again, you can do it from the dashboard or from your right mouse button menu. Next thing to take a look at the uh, on the dashboard, thickening the sketch. So 
this button creates a thin walled feature. Now I have another additional dimension. Let me make that a bigger value of one. And if I rotate my model, you can see that right now it is adding material to the inside of the sketch. You have a flip button on the dashboard that allows you to toggle it to the outside of the sketch or symmetric about the sketch. Let me change to a top view so that you can see that a little easier. So there you can see the sketch and half on the other side. Again, I can toggle between those three different options. And if you hold down the right mouse button, you could choose flip material side to get to that as well. All right, the other options that you have available to you, uh, pretty much if I do not generate this as a thickened sketch, you can add taper or draft to your feature. And here I have a drag handle where I can go and specify what amount of taper that I want. And your draft hinge is basically your sketch and your sketch plane. And for changing the value of the taper, you could double click on the dimension in the graphics area. You also have the value from the pop-up menu. All right, those are pretty much the options that you have available for generating the extrude feature. A couple other things to mention. From the placement tab, this is where it lists the sketch that I'm using since I'm using an external sketch. If you want to break that link to the external sketch, you can click the unlink button and it'll give you a warning that says, hey, I'm about to break the relationship between your external sketch and it'll turn this into an internal sketch. I'll click OK and there you see it says internal section one. Uh, and after I click the check mark, I'll show you the effect of that in the model tree. And again, already went through the options tab. And here we have the properties. This is a place where you can change the name of the feature, but you can also do that from the model tree afterwards. Let's hit the check mark and I'm going to expand the node for extrude. And here I have sketch one, but underneath extrude one, it says section one because I unlinked. So if I make a change to sketch one, extrude one is not going to be affected. Okay, let's create another extrude. And the first time I create a sketch and then use the extrude tool, that's the external sketch method. And I actually broke it later on. Let's take a look at the internal sketch method. And with the internal sketch method, rather than creating the sketch first, you just jump right into the extrude command. If I go to the placement tab, you'll see that it's in red because it says, hey, I need a sketch. You could click the define button or just pick on what you want to use as the sketch plane and it'll drop you right into sketch mode. I'll click the circle tool. I'm just going to create a circle and let's use a diameter of eight. And to get out of sketch mode, again, you can click the green check mark on the dashboard or for expediency, right click and hold and choose OK. And so there you see the preview of the feature that I'm creating. And again, just like before, you can drag out the depth of the feature. There's the flip icon, but I'm going to show you that I'm going to just drag this through the model. And you'll notice that I got a message on the computer screen that it's automatically toggling between adding and removing material. And that's because of the configuration option that I have set. Let me go to File, Options, Configuration Editor, and uh, I forget which one it is, but there's like Auto Add Remove Material. All right, let's go and again, I'm going to drag it into the model. And this time, because I already have material in my model, if I go to the drop down list, you'll see that in addition to the blind depth and symmetric and two selected like I had before, we have options like two next. In other words, just go through until it reaches the very next surface in the model and stop. I only have one other next surface, so there's really not too much uh, to change from here. And also we have through all. In other words, if there's other material, I'll just go through any material that exists before this feature in the model tree. Now there's this other option here that's called through until, let me go to the options tab to show you where it is through until. I don't recommend using that option. That's an older depth option. 
and with through until there's a requirement that your sketch for the feature completely intersects the surface that you are using. But two selected is a little more flexible, it's a little more robust. It, the sketch does not have to fully intersect the entity that you select. And so for that reason, I recommend there's no really no real point at all to using through until just use two selected. And I'm going to use two selected with one other different option over here. With two selected, you have to pick some geometry to drive the depth of your feature. But what I want to show you is how you can create a datum inside of the feature. So let's say that I wanted the depth of the hole to be two units from this surface over here. Well, I can't remember what depth I extruded this to, and I want to build this parametric relationship so that if my feature ever changes length, my cut is only going to go to a distance of two from this surface over here. So from the right side of the dashboard, you can create datums on the fly. And so I'm going to create a datum plane. I'm going to locate it off of this surface and I'm going to drag it and change the value to two. And this datum plane is going to drive my depth so I can change the name of it to depth. Click OK. And when you create datums while you're in the middle of another feature, your dashboard gets paused. To resume the dashboard, click the play button. And now my whole depth is going to be driven by that datum plane. If I go to the options tab, you can see that it's using that datum plane called depth to drive my feature. So now when I hit the check mark, we have the depth of the hole created. And the point of this is, if I ever change the length of this feature over here, for example, change it to a value of 16, then let's regenerate. My feature, my extrude two, is going to stay a distance of two from the bottom surface. And again, let's go and change one more time. Let's change this instead to a value of six. And again, by having that embedded datum that exists in the extrude feature, it's available for me to control my extrude to. All right, so that is the extrude feature. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, for more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are added. Thank you very much.